Welcome back, my gardening friends, to another Focal Point Friday episode. These quickie episodes are either an important highlight from a previous episode or a quick focus on a current event in the food and agricultural world that I think that we should be talking about. Think of these episodes as a way to tickle your brain with one or two ideas to ponder while you're planning or planting or digging in the garden this weekend. Without further ado, let's get down and dirty. Enjoy! One of the main things that I take into consideration when talking with people about what they should grow in their garden is nutrition. Your fresh food is always more nutritious the closer it is consumed to its source. Let me say that again. The food that you eat has a higher nutritional value the closer it is consumed to where it was grown. So if you're picking lettuce out of your windowsill garden or you're picking a tomato off of your back porch and you are having it that night for dinner or for your lunch or whatever, it is always going to contain more nutrients than anything you could possibly get at the grocery store. And there's a very good reason for that. The longer something has been away from its source point, the faster it begins to lose the nutrients. There were studies that have shown that, you know, specifically with things like B vitamins in say spinach, for example, spinach can lose about 30% of its folate, which is one of the B vitamins, um, within seven days of being refrigerated. Now that's not seven days in your refrigerator. That is seven days refrigerated. So think about its journey from the spinach farm in California where it was grown, being cut and and brought into a packing shed to be hydro cooled, now we're refrigerating it, right? You're immediately, you're you're taking the, the field heat out of that so it can be better preserved, which is perfect. That's what you have to do. But then it's being packaged and it's being shipped. It's refrigerated along that journey in order to keep it fresh. Because let's be honest, if you didn't refrigerate it, it would go ugga very quickly. But then it gets to its hub where it then gets distributed to the individual grocery stores. So depending on how far you are from that farm is going to determine how long that vegetable has been in its package before it gets to your store. And then you have no way of knowing how long it's been on the shelf at your store before you take it home. And then there's that best buy date on there. So if it was picked on March 1st and it has taken four days to get to the grocery store shelf and it has a best buy date on it of say March 15th. Uh, So you've picked it up even if you get it the day that it gets to the store, are you going to eat all of that within the first three days? Uh, Even if you do, it's already lost 30% of its nutrient value, right? Broccoli and other brassicas are even worse. Um, There's all kinds of reasons why you should be growing your own stuff. So another reason to grow your own food, even if it's just a little bit of something, is that you have complete control over what goes into and on that food. So if you look annually at the uh, Environmental Working Group's list, Uh, They call it the Dirty Dozen. It's their list of the top 12 produce items that have the highest amounts of pesticide residue left on them after being washed. And any of those things are things that you and your family consume frequently. Again, spinach, as an example, is on that list. Broccoli is on that list. Usually strawberries are at the top of that list. Um, any of those things, and you're concerned about consuming any levels of those pesticides, then grow it yourself. You can choose how to protect your crop from uh, pests and from you know diseases and such, um, and you can choose not to use those types of chemicals or choose ones that you feel safe consuming. Um, if you're more comfortable with it, if you're not you know a proponent of organics, but you still are concerned about the level of pesticide use, 
whether it's from you know a health concern, a safety concern, or even if it's a, a concern for the amount of chemicals that are actually being put into the soil, you can control that when you're growing your own. The third reason that I think it's important for somebody to grow their own stuff is it really does give you a sense of empowerment to be able to look on your plate and see even just one thing that you have grown yourself. There is an innate desire inside people to, you know, provide for ourselves and provide for our families and our loved ones. It's, it's, it's just what we do. Um, and when you're buying all of your food from someplace else, it's all being produced by somebody else. You sort of lose a little bit of that sense of, I am providing for my family. I am supporting myself. Um, even though, you know, you are because monetarily you had to earn that money somehow. You had to be able to go to the store and pick up that stuff. And so you are still providing for your family. But, you know, growing a tomato or growing a cucumber and slicing that cucumber up and throwing it on your plate or slicing it up and, and making a dip and giving it to your kids for them to enjoy, there is something very satisfying about that. And there is something that just kind of deep inside you goes, yes, I, I did that. I am providing for my family. And I, I think that's even more important when you look in terms of, you know, where we live. And if you are somebody who lives in the city and you don't have access to a huge garden and you don't have access to a community garden plot, um, and you don't have a, even a balcony that's got enough sun to be able to do something on, you still can grow something of your own in your kitchen, under a little, you know, cheapy grow light, even if it's just a little container of greens or a little container of some sort of an herb that you enjoy, or maybe some mint that you want to throw in your water, anything, any little one thing is going to give you that sense of, yes, I accomplished this. I did this. And it, it, it just speaks to the rest of your day to go, yeah, I did that. Look at me. Look at me go. <laughs> Look at me grow. Thanks for joining me on this Focal Point Friday. I'll be back again on Tuesday for another regular episode of the Just Grow Something podcast. So until next time, my gardening friends, keep on cultivating that dream garden and we'll talk again soon.